Hi, my name is Kim and I'm here at Watson's Greenhouse Nursery in Puyallup and we're going to talk about pollinators, specifically mason bees. I've heard a lot of people come through and say I had tons of apple blossoms and I got very few apples. We tend to overlook pollinators and how many pollinators we have in our gardens and how many we draw into our gardens. If you've ever picked a half-blown strawberry that looks warped, if you're trying to plant butternut squash, pumpkins, spaghetti squash, peppers, tomatoes, all those things that we put our hard-earned money and work, sweat, equity into, and then we don't seem to yield very much or they're misshapen, not very big. It probably is a pollinator issue. It can take up to 10 to 20 different touches of a pollinator to even pollinate an entire squash blossom, which is a lot of touches if we're just relying on the pollinators we have in our yard. Especially in urban developments, we've got our patio fruits and our patio gardens and we want to be able to pick the strawberries and blueberries and have fun with our kids. So I have got a great pet-friendly, kid-friendly, family-friendly way to bring pollinators to your garden. And they're called mason bees. These are nature's little powerhouse. They work two times to three times better than honey bees because they have these hairs all over their body like Velcro. And the pollen, when they visit the flowers, just sticks to their whole body. Now they look like a little black fly until you've seen them digging themselves into a squash blossom or going around your strawberry blossoms and they start picking up all of those pollens, sloughing them off wherever they go. Let's talk about how we can create a nest for the mason bees. Here at Watson's, we work with crownbees.com and that's a very informative website to go to. And we have the paraphernalia here for mason bees as well as the little cocoons. Now there's a few things to know about mason bees. Number one, they don't go far from their nest. They only travel about 300 feet away from their nest, which is about a football field. We need to be able to have our pollinators close to our garden areas, our fruit trees, even ornamentals like pieris and early blooming cherry trees, apple trees. These guys hatch with five or more consecutive days of 55 degrees plus. You can put the little box right here in the house facing towards the back so that birds don't get the cocoons and they will naturally come out when they're ready those long warmer days that we start getting about this time and you'll notice that your trees are blooming but they're waiting for the pollinators. The first ones to come out are the males. Now the males will be right around the house waiting for the females to come out because the only job of the males, I'm so sorry, is just to procreate with the females. In each one of these boxes you get four females and six males. The males again are great for the procreation and then they actually die after that. So sorry guys, bye bye. The queen's gonna be so busy after that because because she is laying the larva, putting the pollen in, and capping it off with mud, and doing that layer in little holes, specifically mason bee size, right there in the house. And she's gonna travel down here and start laying her larva. Now, she's gonna travel around, she's gonna pick up all that pollen on her body, and she's gonna pack it in with the larva, but then she needs some mud to protect the larva from birds and different predators. They need a clay mud. If your mud in your yard is more of a sandy, silty mud, you'll need to get some clay mud to make it easier for her to make a solid mud wall to protect her cocoons. This is a mud mix. You need to mix it with water and make a long snake of clay and put it down in a hole that you've dug about a few inches down and put it on the side of the hole so she can go down and take the mud and pack it into the little hole to protect her young. She's gonna try to find mud only about 25 feet away. If you can put the home and the mud very close to blooming bushes and trees so that she can collect her pollen. Now, what's so great about the mason bees is again, they come out about this time with our early fruit trees that bloom. And so March 
through June, you've got mason bees doing the pollinating. And then when the warmer bees like leaf cutters and other bees come, they will be active from June through the fall. And so you can get a full from spring through the fall activity with pollinators to ensure a good crop for you and your family. Again, very pet safe and family friendly. They are very docile. They have no hive to protect, no honey to protect, and they don't even have a stinger. They can walk right along your finger and they're not going to hurt you because their main work is creating new larvae for next year so they can pollinate our gardens and yards next year. Thanks so much. Have fun. Again, crownbees.com is a great website to go and visit. And happy pollinating!